Inside Mercer Basketball with Coach Bob Hoffman and your host, Rick Cameron. Brought to you by Wild Wing Cafe. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Wild Wing Cafe at the shops at River Crossing. We're here with Mercer Head Basketball Coach Bob Hoffman to talk inside Mercer Basketball. Well, Coach, we only had one game this past week, the way the season has played out. So uh, let's pick your brain in some other areas. I know you don't get to watch as much basketball as you would like, trying to get your team ready, but you still keep up and watch a lot. Let me pick your brain a little bit. Right now in the country, what's the toughest league? Uh, well, everybody that watches it a lot uh, seems like they are thinking Big 12. Yep. Even though the Big 12 is really only 10 teams. Yeah. And the, and the Big 10 is <laughs> yeah. 12 teams. Yeah. So yeah. if you can figure that out or yeah. get it all, and that's people in high, you know have degrees making trying those to make decisions. those decisions yeah so call them whatever but uh the big 12 has been good uh from top to bottom yeah and a lot of the teams that did well early in non-conference are struggling yeah uh texas a m being one of them they were all the way to the top oh they're in the southeastern conference oh yeah there i you forgot go. they're in the big 12 <laughs> but but they they have been struggling yeah uh, baylor started off pretty good they they've had a, a tough time yeah there, there's uh bunch of teams in the Big 12 uh, kind of been up and down. Yeah. Oklahoma State's lost a few recently. Uh, and then K-State, West Virginia, I mean, you could just yeah. go down. Texas hasn't won as many. Texas Tech's playing great. Yeah. Uh, Oklahoma's playing great. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Kansas is amazing. Yeah. Now, in the 10 years you've been at Mercer, you've taken us to some great venues, exposed us yeah. to a lot of great campus experiences. In your opinion, where is the toughest venue, arena, gym in the country to go in and play? Well, I haven't been in all of them. Um, I know when we played at Brigham Young when I was at, in, in uh, coaching Oklahoma Baptist, it was really hard. And when we went back there in the NIT, it was pretty, yeah. pretty amazing. Marriott Center is huge. Yeah. And, and uh, Utah State was one of the toughest places yeah. I'd been in Very also. Loud. far as what I've seen or heard, you know, I know Kentucky's really yeah. difficult. I haven't been in there when it's been that way. I know Duke is incredible that way. I haven't experienced that one either. Um, it seems like some of them are, are, are gaining momentum. Kansas is, I've been in that one and it was, we had a game one and it was the year we tied for the Big 12 championship when I was assistant at Oklahoma. Uh, we had the game one and they came back from a ridiculous run in the last three or four minutes yeah. and you know where they have bear, beware of the fog or whatever and it <laughs> and it came true that night yeah. we had we had them beat didn't get it finished so uh, i i think those places are incredible i know there's a lot a lot of really good ones yeah. but those are the ones that come to mind there's a lot of uh, the great coaches in this country that are good friends of yours but it, if you could narrow it down to one who would be the toughest coach to try to get ready to play against well i think virginia is right now the head coach? Yeah, I okay. think his style of play, uh, Bennett, uh, Tony Bennett. Yeah. I mean, he his dad was an NEI guy, grew up uh, Wisconsin, D2, went in championships, got to Wisconsin, and uh, Tony went with him to Washington State and took over the job there. And uh, he he has his philosophy from his dad. Plus, he played in the pros. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he has the 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 college defensive. Uh, set of way they play you can't hardly get through yeah. it. Uh, it the gap defense is incredible and then he runs a lot of great offensive things yeah. uh, to complement including a, a motion type offense that he's known for where they run over the top and run it's kind of a backwards than what most people would think you drive the ball and you bring somebody on a down screen a, a, a back where the ball just came from and the same time have a flare going on so to me, I think right now, I would say ACC coaches would say it too. Yeah. They have a chance to win three league championships in a row yeah. and nobody would ever talk about them in that way before he got there. Yeah. Now, as a head coach, uh, some places you go, the uh, opposing fans, the student body kind of get to know you and greet oh, really? you a little bit. Yeah. Never what is that. that like when you take your team on the road and all of a sudden uh, they're chanting your name or et cetera to try to get they're the attention? Your tweets or yeah, calling yeah. You what is that night, like as the uh, opposing you head coach? You up. Um, Do you just kind of laugh it off or you roll with it or what? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's part, I mean, if you're not having some of that 
happen, then you're probably not, not winning enough, and yeah. you probably have no rivalries going on, um, and nobody really cares. I mean, to me, that's a credit to wherever that is. Uh, we have several teams in our league that those people know everything's going on, <laughs> and uh, they love hoops. Yeah. And they live and breathe. We were doing the radio show last night with Coach Gardner, and she's from up that way in Tennessee, yeah. and uh, she agrees wholeheartedly, even uh, when she was playing, that how, how well yeah. those folks know what basketball should look yeah. like and, yeah. and know how to cheer for it. All right, Coach, as we approach the end of this segment, if you're going to go out on a limb and pick a team, Final Four national champion today, what's your team? Why Besides are we, do, why are we doing this? Oh, okay. Uh, because we're picking your brain. Oh, well, uh, that's not much to pick, man. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's who's your Who's that's your team, scary. Virginia? I, I think Virginia, I mean, they they haven't been there yet. Yeah. And they've had some, I mean, Malcolm Brogdon was unbelievable. And he was a rookie of the year in the NBA. They didn't get there. In fact, they were in the same regional with us that mm -hmm. year, that one year. I I, I think they have a, a legitimate shot okay. just because of their defense and their they're scoring more than they have in the past. Uh, I'd be shocked if they, they're not there. And then it's hard to rule out Duke, yep. and they're both in the same league. Yep. And then uh, Kansas is not what they have been in the past, but they just keep winning. Uh, so, I mean, you, you could look at a lot of other teams uh, along the way. I'd said Wichita State a couple weeks ago, yep. and, the, and they're getting into their league play a little bit and haven't played as well. But yep. I, I think those two teams, to me, I'd say Duke and Virginia, uh, right off the top would be the ones I would consider uh, right away. College basketball hoops, you got to love it in February as we head toward March. We come back, uh, Coach has got a good interview coming up in just a moment, but next we're going back to Hawkins Arena for our Mercer Player Spotlight. Back with more in just a moment inside Mercer Basketball. Sure, you can tell them how fun college is. Concerts on the quad, early morning tailgates, your bearded professor with his suede elbow patches or you can give someone different answers. So go ahead and get ready for the typical questions, but know that Mercer has given you anything but typical answers. Back in Hawkins Arena, time now for our player spotlight uh, for this week. We're talking with Jalen Stowe, junior guard of Harrisburg, North Carolina. Jalen. When I think of growing up in North Carolina, I can just see everybody with a basketball in their hand. That yeah, just seems definitely. to be a state where you got to love basketball. Yep. Tell us about uh, growing up Harrisburg prior to coming to Mercer, what life was like. Um, life in Harrisburg, you know, I lived in a uh, suburban neighborhood. You know, I used to every day after school, after everybody did their homework, they'd come to my house and I have a basketball goal in my backyard. We'd play basketball from like around four o'clock until the sun was all the way down. And that's what we did every day, all the way up until about middle school. And then everybody starts getting ready, playing on middle school teams, and then move on to high school. And you know, basketball is really a big thing in North Carolina, you know, from city to city, everywhere is really like basketball, 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 yeah. especially in the wintertime yeah. and stuff. So. And then at what point did you become interested and eventually end up here at Mercer? Well, actually, you know, before. I started getting recruited as a D1 basketball player. Duke was my favorite team. You know, North Carolina, you always got to pick. That's right. That's you know, right. North Carolina we learned that, Duke. didn't we, in yeah. 2014. So I, my favorite team was Duke. Yeah. And so it was that was my junior year when they played Mercer. And when Mercer beat them, I was actually pretty upset. <laughs> but then. Uh, you might be the first Mercer player I've ever yeah. heard say that. But uh, after Coach Hoffman started recruiting me, you know, I obviously had to let all that fanfare stuff go to the side. Yeah. And, um, you know, Coach Hoff, he just showed a great interest in me coming out of high school. And um, I took a visit in the summer before school started. And then, you know, it's been Mercer Bears ever since. Jalen, I have to admit, in the time that you've been here, I have been in this arena uh, covering a baseball game, maybe stopped in uh, all times of the year, and I can hear basketball dribbling. And I look down the floor, and there you are by yourself. Kind of walk us through the, the mindset and the attitude you take in making yourself better at all times of a college basketball player? Um, you know, I take a lot of pride in working out on my own extra because, you know, every basketball player in the country, you know, has practice or extra workouts with coaches. But, you know, it's the ones that separate themselves even more when they work out by themselves, you know, and that's something that's always been 
instilled in me since I was little because I've never been the most talented or the biggest or the strongest, but if I work harder than everybody else, then I feel like that would give me an edge. So that's kind of how I look at it. As a junior now in this program, you're getting your feet on the ground, playing a lot more. Uh, have, do you think you have changed any as a person thus far and now your third year on this team? Uh, I feel like I've definitely grown as a person, you know, being, a, being in college, being away from home, you know, not even in terms of being a couple of cities away, but being in a completely different state, learning a whole different lingo and stuff like that. I feel like I've definitely grown as a person and matured more as a young man every year. You know, my freshman year, I started out a little slow, you know, academically and at basketball, it was a tough transition, but now I feel like I can lead other guys and stuff and, you know, try to help people out and stuff like that. The one thing I've been waiting to ask you, I watch a lot of basketball, you know what my job is here. I don't know how many times I see a guy who can play the point guard or can then go down to the four or five position and battle for rebounds. Tell us about how you prepare for a game, knowing you might be bringing the ball down the floor, you might be battling a seven footer for a rebound. Um, you know, I just take pride, you know, just being able to do whatever it takes nice to win. Inside. You know, luckily God nice blessed me with right. a physical, strong body, you know, that can guard the quickest guys and then battle with the strongest guys, you know. And obviously, I know I have a big heart, so, you know, I'm just a big competitor. You know, I hate to lose. Yeah. So, I mean, whatever the coaches are asking us to do, you know, I feel like I can step into that position and be able to help us tremendously on both ends of the floor. Tell us about the chemistry of this team as we prepare for or finish up the non-region, get ready for some important conference game. How is the chemistry among this team? Uh, I think the chemistry has been great. You know, on defense, we're a lot more in sync, and you know, I think that's a good testament to Coach Larry, you know, bringing in like a new way of playing defense. I feel like we're up together a lot more, you know, how we're talking and communicating. We can still obviously get better, but I feel like we're a lot better at that. And then offensively, you know, I feel like everybody just knows what they got to do to be successful. We know, like, who's great shooters, who's great drivers, who are great passers, you know, so we all know what everybody can do and what their strengths and weaknesses are. And then obviously pretty much having the same team as the year before mm -hmm. plays a great part in it as well. So, How hungry is this team to finish the job, take care of business in Asheville in March? I mean, very hungry. You know, we want everybody to know this team, you know, it's a great team. I feel like everybody wants to get to the tournament, you know, because you know, it's not every year you get to go to the tournament, you know, it's rare. So I feel like we're really hungry. We want to win. Obviously, we're going after trying to win every game, no matter who we're playing against. All right, so, Jack, that, uh, final question. What are you majoring in? What do you hope to do one day when uh, basketball shoes are hung up? Uh, majoring in communication studies and minoring in uh, media studies. And, you know, whenever I get older, I want to be able to be a commentator or, you know, do something with the, in the sports world, you know, whether that's coaching, training, commentating, or, you know, just being up there, helping people out and stuff, so. Sounds great. That's Jalen Stowe, our junior guard out of Harrisburg, North Carolina. We'll be back in just a moment, go back up to Wild Wing and finish with more Inside Mercer Basketball. Hey, all you Bear fans, I know we're having a great time at this game. It's exciting, fun. We're getting after it. If you want to have a good time after this game, you need to go over to Margarita's in Mercer Village. They have amazing Mexican food and they're going to take care of you. All kinds of specials. You can find what you want. Look at my body. It's working good for me. Come on over and check them out at Mercer Village Margarita's. Welcome back to Inside Mercer Basketball at Wild Wing Cafe at the shops at River Crossing. We have an amazing guy with us today, Tyree Moore Jr. That's right. Heavy on the junior. Got to make sure we get the junior in. Uh, welcome to the show. Glad you're a part of the show today, but more importantly, thank you for all you do for our program. Yes, sir. Well, it's great to be here, Coach. Very thankful for this opportunity. Yeah, how, how many years have you been with our program now? This will be the fourth year. And what are you getting your degree in? Uh, I'm getting my degree in mechanical engineering, and I'll also have a master's in mechanical engineering come this now, summer. Now, I want to go back to that because it's very impressive. In four years, at the same time, you're going to graduate. Make sure everybody understands, yeah. undergrad and a graduate, degree in engineering? Yes, sir. And what is that specific degree going to be it in? It's going to be in mechanical engineering, which 
with any kind of emphasis? Or? Well, I mean, the emphasis is mechanical. You can do mechanical, electrical, You can tell I have civil. no idea what I'm talking about when right. it comes to engineering. I, I count twos and threes. Anything over that math gets way too difficult for me. You know, uh, Tyree does a lot of uh, things for us. Tyree has been a great part of our program. Tell everybody where you went to high school in Charleston and uh, the teams you guys, the team, teams you were on back in Charleston. Right. Back so like you said, I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. I yeah. Live, we live downtown, just a few blocks away from the Citadel. Beautiful so, place. Yeah, know them kind of well. But uh, <laughs> I went to Academic Magnet High School, which is more of an academic high school rather than an athletic powerhouse, you know. But uh, we played 2A, so we played um, smaller schools you may not have heard of. But then I played AAU basketball with uh, trademark properties. And they have a lot of good South Carolina recruits from the low country in the mid-state Columbia area. It's a pretty big uh, AAU program in South Carolina. And, and Tyree has been a part of our program for all those years, and now he's helping us as a student, manager, graduate manager, maybe all of the above. He's just <laughs> He's basically an assistant to all of us. Uh, the, his main responsibility for our program is taking care of video. I know every when the game's over, you hand me, I'm a DVD guy, so you try to give me a bunch of DVDs. I know you don't like that, but I'm sorry you, you have to deal with that. But uh, I'm old school in that sense. But tell everybody, once the game is over, what you have to do to get everything uploaded, downloaded. Uh, I think it would be fascinating especially the time you spend getting everybody and all the assistants what they want so right. they can study the next game coming up. Right, so after the games, I usually have the next set of games ready for Coach Hoffman. I download those, That's from, me. Syn yeah. Yeah. Download those from Synergy and uh, put them on DVDs, burn them, get maybe seven or eight games, get into Coach Hoffman, and I take the game film that That's we... That's me. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. that is you, yes sir. Yeah. And then I uh, take the game film that we recorded on an SD card and I convert it from a couple different formats, and I get that. It takes probably a couple hours to convert it, and then I upload that to Synergy, and Synergy processes it so all the other teams can see the video. And Synergy is a format all over the country that most programs are a part of. That's where we get our video on other teams that we're getting ready to watch. Exactly. But you can't get video on certain teams until you do you're uploading, right? right? Yeah. And and so I mean, if I don't do it, they'll send me an email real quick letting me know I need to get on it. And then when that video gets to Synergy, they have folks all over the country yeah. that take every play and cut it up into different what kind of segments? I mean, they categorize it by all types of different things. They do like rebounds, steals, assists, but like attempts, shot attempts, zone defense, man defense, like every, everything you can imagine they categorize it. So when you started doing this last year, right. what, what surprised you about all that? Uh, just the amount of time that they put into like specify all the different possibilities so that a coach can go in there and find exactly what he needs. You know, that's pretty interesting to me. So as you have you gone through and learned different techniques, you probably found a few shortcuts along the way being the smart guy you are. Uh, that does it take you quite as long maybe? Or I don't know, how long does it take you every day or every night after a game to get everything going? Uh, get, get I mean, it, going it takes a couple synergy. hours, but I mean, that's not, I'm not really doing too much work with that. It's more my computer having to convert the different video formats. But then, uh, in addition to that, I have to do some work for Coach Lair to create the scouts that we do, getting the stuff from Synergy and putting them into iMovie, which is the movie editor that we use to create our scouts. Me and Elvis do a lot of that. Elvis does it for Coach Merrill and uh, Coach Aker. So you, you spend most of your time in video, and beyond that, you get to help with uh, the guys rebounding, getting shots up, uh, doing laundry, all those different things. Is it something now that you've done a little bit, uh, you would ever contemplate being in coaching, or now that you've seen it this up close and personal, you're going to run as far away from it as you possibly can? Oh, well, I definitely, I mean, it's opened my eyes. There's a couple different aspects. I mean, I like being around the kids and being around the team atmosphere and just having that opportunity to go out and win games every single day. But I also see how much our assistants are traveling so much and they're away from their families during the off season and during the season that it, so I'm gonna have to sit down and really look in the mirror and kind of figure out what I need want to do coming up. Well, and it might depend on your girlfriend. You have one of those, right? I do. You do? Okay, well, it might depend on what she thinks. You might want to talk to her about that. 
Tyree, you do an amazing job. We're so blessed. You're a part of our program all these years, and uh, we hope to get to have you one more year. You're thinking about getting another degree. Yes, sir. That all works out. At, is an MBA is yeah. what you're thinking about doing? And then you'll have like eight degrees? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're, we're grateful and thankful you're part of our program. Thanks for all you do. We'll be right back here at Wild Wing Cafe in Inside Mercer Basketball with the voice of the Bears, Rick Cameron, right after this. For over 20 years, Mercer has relied on Forsyth Street Orthopedics. Their team of physicians keeps players on the court. Forsyth Street Orthopedics and Ortho Georgia have merged together into one practice and we're stronger than ever with 26 physicians and five regional offices. As a graduate of Mercer and a partner of Ortho Georgia, we are proud to sponsor and take care of Mercer athletes. Ortho Georgia, getting better together. Go Bears! Well, we're back at Wild Wing as we continue with Inside Mercer Basketball. Coach, only one game last week, but if you would, uh, who would you pick as our Sonic Player of the Week? Well, I think we had several different players that uh, played good, but we were going to go with uh, Desmond Ringer. That's who we chose uh, last night. We're going to stick with it. Okay. He had a, had a really good game. He's been playing at a high level uh, almost. I think he didn't miss any shots against East Tennessee. That's correct. Uh, shot the ball well. and. Had an opportunity to get a few more. We'll need him playing yep. at a high level here as we finish up the season. And he seems to be getting in a little bit of rhythm, which is great for our, for us. And then our Marcos delivery of the week. Yeah, we're going to go with Jordan Strawberry. He's, he's really close. He's, he's closing in. I think he's fourth all time right now in assists. He's closing in on third, yep. just a few away. Uh, uh, a familiar just, name, James Florence. Yeah, James Florence, who was one of the best players I ever coached. Uh, Still playing overseas, yeah. playing really well. All-time leading scorer at Mercer. Yeah, and he was MVP of a tournament at the end of the year last year. So, uh, Good company. Great company. And uh, when you think about it, came in as a walk-on and now is going to have a chance to leave as a third all-time leading assist guy yeah. in Mercer history. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Making occupational medicine so con roundup, uh, coach the league as we predict you predicted. It's any given night. Don't uh, put that on me. No, I'm sorry. Maybe I said that. <laughs> no. But just recently, coach, we've seen the Citadel one shot away from uh, giving ETSU their first loss. Yeah, we missed we a saw, couple layups to win. That's the game. right. We saw Chattanooga hit a miraculous three-point bank shot to take UNCG into overtime, a uh, two overtime, win that game. So uh, it seems like league play. It's just as crazy as it's ever been. Yeah, I think uh, I think any given night, I think it's been this case since we've been in the league. I think it's to a higher degree of difficulty to win home or away against yeah. all these teams that have guys that can make shots. And the three-point shooting is yeah. just amazing in our league. Yeah. ETSU, thanks to uh, that shot missing, remains at 10-0. and 0, So they're, they're the front runner, you might say, at this point with a month to go. No doubt. Then UNCG and Walford at 7-2. and two. Furman, who we're about to play at 6-3. and three. So those are the teams that currently are set atop of the league. Yeah, and uh, Furman's had a couple of close games, including ours with them. We had an opportunity to win the game uh, right at the beginning of the year on the road at their place. Didn't Weren't able to get it done. Um, Missed a couple shots and they hit. They hit uh, a couple runners and different things late. Uh, but Wofford has Fletcher McGee, who can win on any night, any place, and yeah. have done that. Uh, They've had some great wins this yeah, year. Yeah, they have tremendous wins. Georgia Tech, they beat North Carolina, North Carolina, and then uh, Greensboro. We lost that game in overtime on the road, also. So uh, those four teams are playing the best and deserve to be where they are because of what they've been able to accomplish. Yeah, uh, we've got a great weekend of basketball coming up. Our Mercer women's team, uh, one of the hottest teams in the nation. Amazing. 20 wins already this year. Coach Gardner now the all-time. votes in the poll. Coach Gardner, the all-time winningest coach. So we're pairing with them a doubleheader against Furman and Walford. Let's start with Furman. You basically uh, shared the last time against Furman, but anything new as our fans uh, get ready to cover well, the arena. Before we do that, and we had a doubleheader at Furman and we Kiki did. got 12 threes tied the NCAA record. She and, did. Uh, I know they'll, I'm sure Furman ladies will be yep. remembering that. That should be an amazing game. Yeah. And Coach Gardner's telling her team, don't expect Kiki to hit 12 threes she again. She might get 13. <laughs> she might hit 13. But give us a preview of Furman, uh, the second go round. Well, they, they have multiple guys can drive the yep. basketballs. Devin Sibley, who was the player of the year in the league last year, he's the preseason conference player of the year this year. To me, Daniel Fowler's probably the MVP of their team right now. Sibley's been hurt a little bit. He's still great. Oh, yeah. I'm not yeah. saying he's 
he can't still be the player of the year, yeah. but Daniel Fowler's played tremendous. And then uh, you look at Brown has played great, playing the four position undersize. Rafferty's playing really good inside. And then Davis has hit multiple big threes for yeah. them late game again in situations when you don't expect him to be the guy and he's yeah. made plays. So uh, really every one of their starters can make plays and then they have Jordan Lyons off the bench yeah. and multiple other guys that Jeffrey have Beans. Yeah, that made plays throughout the season. So they attack you, they drive it, they make a second attack and then they kick it out and they play really tough man to man defense. So we're gonna have to do a good job of attacking the catch. Uh, the right way and finding our shooters yeah. and uh, knock down some little shots. And then when Thursday comes and goes, we will have played Furman twice, we will have played ETSU twice, but then on Saturday, Walford for the first time. Yeah, it's an interesting schedule. Uh, uh, I've Fletcher, never been through anything yeah. quite like this. But Fletcher McGee coming to uh, town. And they're playing great. And and he he has been shooting the ball. He's top three or four in the country. Alonzo, him, I mean, you look at the stats and yeah. you know, what you're going to get, you get, you got to be ready, and it, you have to play for 40 minutes against a Mike Young team that uh, always seems to know where and how they're going to get a shot and are very successful in getting it done. Well, Hawkins Arena has become one of the most intimidating places yeah. to play, and with both the women and men back to back, be great, great opportunity crowd. for our fans to show up, pack the house, and make some noise against uh, these two teams. Could be in. four great games. Uh, I can't imagine why you would be anywhere else. There you go. If you're a ball fan, you'd be in the, in the arena watching those games this weekend. All right, that's where we want you to be. We'll be back next week when we return with more Inside Mercer Basketball.